Ladies and gentlemen, today is December 8th, 2012, and this is The Can Kale Show, episode 62. I am your host, Keenan Lafferty. Today we are going to be doing a tutorial on masking and its importance in our lives, right? But before we get into that, I'm going to put my glasses back on. And I'm going to take you to a lovely land called the Emma Comic Online webpage, right? And I'm taking you here because we just released part two of Emma today, right? So I will leave a link in the description for you to go check it out. If you have any questions, comments, please feel free to comment on it. But you can see here, basically you just come to the web page and you click this panel here, and it will take you straight to part two of the comic. And if you haven't read part two, then go back and read part one. Moving on to the lovely lane. We got some new amazing things here. We got Sona here. Or that is Sona, right? Or maybe not. I, I think so. Shine on lovely support. I'm guessing that's Sona. But it has different things in the different things in the hair. You have this awesome Princess Mononoke. All you could ever want, lovely ladies, turtles in time, and Emma fan art. And speaking of Emma fan art, we got Pepe Jordan's drawing himself as a, as a zombie. For those of you who don't know, you can draw yourself as a zombie and post it to the k and Kale Facebook or the Emma Comic Online Facebook, where you will find amazing things such as this piece done by Alicia. The No matter what, we stay professional on the stream and in the show, right? We never make mistakes. And she even went ahead and made a teacher for herself. That's so awesome. So thank you guys so much for all of the fan art and all the submissions to... Facebook. I could not ask for more incredible fans. So please, submit more, tell your friends about it, and uh, oh shoot, I totally forgot about the Twitter. Uh, usually this is the part where I go to the Twitter, but because I forgot to pull it up, I'll just say, please, if you haven't followed me on Twitter yet, go ahead and do that. I'm at Knockwurst. Now, with all that out of the way, let us go ahead and move into the tutorial! The masking tutorial! Mmm, feels so good to be cleaned up. Oh, spent all week itching my nose and working on the comic, right? Trying to get out the next nine pages, right? Originally, I was only planning on releasing six, but my buddy kind of came to me and he's like, no. No, people deserve more than that. And he motivated me to basically work until 3 o'clock in the morning throughout the week, every night. And wake up at 8 in the morning. And that was tons of fun. But that is another conversation for Monday on the Emma stream. <laughs> so let's go ahead and move right into this. So basically what you're going to need to begin masking is some clean line art, right? And actually you don't necessarily even need super clean line art. But the important thing is, is that you have the edges cleaned up. Because I'm going to, the way that we're going to be masking today is using the magic wand magic wand we're going to go dink and it will expand and fill the spaces around it and then we are going to contract it invert it and then it will select exactly what we want it to do and that is indeed magic so as I was saying we got lines then underneath that we're gonna make another layer and I call this the character mask or in this case it's just Emma the Emma mask so let us go ahead and I want to show you guys what happens if you don't have clean edges and clean line art, right? Let me show you what happens. If you if you have an opening like that, and you go to use your magic wand, which is W, right? If you click that, it's going to select the inside of her arm. See that? That is not good. So you want to make sure you clean that stuff up. That is unacceptable. Clean that up. And then again, usually, here's a good example. Like, Say I have this really, really sketchy smiley face, right? If I were to ever draw a smiley face like this, and then the stick man, well, actually, he needs to have a body. So let's go like this, right? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> let's take care of that. <laughs> anyway, we got this really sketchy stick man, right? And <laughs> we want to clean up the edges so we can mask it. Basically, the way I go about doing that is I'll take the ink, take the ink brush, or rather, I would take, take, take my ink brush. And for those of you who don't know, I uploaded all of these brushes that I use onto DeviantArt. 
so you can download them and stop bugging me about it. And because I love you guys. And basically all I do is I'll go back through and I'll use this ink brush. It's basically a full opacity, full opacity hard round brush, right? And I'll clean up these edges, right? Take away all those things. You can have all the sketchy lines you want on the inside, but the outside needs to be clean. Right? And then oop. And then go back and repair any lines that you need to. And then I will do the experiment. We'll do the experiment on both of these, right? I'll show you what happens. Just make sure you have clean line art on the outside. And it can be as sketchy as you want on the inside. There we go. Alright. So let's let's both find out what happens to both of these characters. Let's go ahead and select everything around them, right? This is filling the space around them. And then you want to go in and fill in all these little empty spaces, like between arms and basically places where the thing didn't get to. Ah, look at this. We are not quite ready, as we can see here. There is an opening somewhere. We must find it. We must find it. Where is it? It's right there. There you go. Let's test it really quick. That works. Looks like everything else is working accordingly. All right, so once you have your guys selected, your figure selected, all you have to do is go to select, the select menu up top, and then hit inverse. Or you can use the shortcut, which is shift control I, and that will basically invert. You selected all the area around the character, right? When you invert it, now it's selecting everything inside the character. And then what you're going to do is go ahead and pick a color for your mask, and then hit shift F5 to fill, hit enter, and there you have it. See, now you have clean masks, and you saved a lot of time. Because I'll tell you the other way that I used to do this. The other way that I was doing this. The other way I was doing this before was, and you can just go back in and clean up stuff that you missed. I don't know why I didn't select that, though. Oh, it's because there was an opening there. Ah! Aha! Aha! So basically, you can see what it did there. Even with all these sketchy lines on the inside, it still created a nice mask for us to work with. And I will show you the alternative way that does not work as well. And this was another thing that I was trying for a little while. Another thing that I would do was I would mask things like this. And I still run into this problem every now and then. I'll try to create a mask just by selecting all of these little things in here, right? But once you get to like high detail points, like say these shoes, you gotta like zoom in here and you gotta like get the get the lace and everything, you gotta get like that little thing in there. And then inevitably when you fill it. Oh. Well, it looks like. Okay, there we go. And then inevitably when you fill it, say even with this guy, right? If you have a bunch of sketchy lines on the inside, it's gonna be impossible for you to mask it like this, right? If you try to fill it, it's gonna look terrible. And not only that, but then at the edges of the lines. There's all these imperfections that you have to go back in. You have to fix those, right? And that can be a comic book artist nightmare, right? You don't want to deal with this. So don't do that. So let's go ahead and get rid of this. That's what you don't do. Let's get back to what you do do. <laughs> I said do do. All right. So <laughs> what we're going to be moving on to next is how to separate the mask. This basically lays out all the silhouettes and this makes it much easier for you to create masks on top of it, right? So let's create a new layer over top of the mask. And let's name this one skin. I usually like to start with the skin because I feel it's the most important to do and the most important to pay close attention to. Because as I've said before, humans are... The human creature is very, very conditioned to see the color of the skin and tell immediately the health of a person, how that person's feeling, you know, you get pale when you're scared or when you're sick and if you're blushing, you might be shy or might have told the crush that you like them. The crush of your class. I don't, I don't know why I said the crush. A crush. Your crush. So, um, okay. So basically from this point out here, what you have to do is you have to grab your lasso. Grab your lasso. Right? And go ahead, and you can lasso as much as you want out here, right? You can go completely crazy. As long as when you get back inside the mask, 
be returned to normal, right? Let's go ahead and get rid of that. But basically, what I'm explaining here is all you have to worry about masking now is just the intersecting lines that are within the mask. And that will save you a lot of time. And the reason why you're doing this, or the reason why you can do this, is because the layer that we've created on top, remember that skin layer? Oh, here, I actually went ahead and did it. Um, I held Alt and clicked between the layers, which actually creates what we call a clipping mask. And I'll go a little bit more into what that means exactly. Clipping mask is almost, think of it as a stencil. It's basically saying, okay, whatever is behind, whatever is behind this layer, the colors will not go outside of it, right? So, meaning, watch. I will show you. I will show you. Let's go ahead and just color this ear. Actually, let me mask the face first, and then, then we'll do that. Just for the sake of the show. So see, just going in here. The face can be fairly compensated or compensated. Compensated. Complicated. The face can be fairly compensated with money. My face can be compensated with money. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, the face can be fairly complicated, right? Because everything's inside the mask. So this is probably the only point where you'll really have to bother masking stuff out. But I'll tell you this once. It's better to do the work here, right? Because if you make clean masks, it will save you so much time. I thought that, you know, there was ways for me to sidestep stuff and shortcut stuff. Maybe there is. Maybe there is another way to do this that somebody else is doing. But for right now, this is the best way that I've found. And I've tried doing the, you know, clicking the, the wand inside of all the little shapes thinking it was saving me time, but it just ends up creating so many headaches. And it's just a pain in the butt when you look back on your, your colors or your masks and there's just like all these little imperfections along the line. And that, that just, ugh, just bothers me. That is my arch nemesis. I never want to see it. Okay, so go ahead and select your skin color. Let's go ahead and do this. Now I'll show you what a clipping mask does. Let's say we didn't have this conjoined with the layer behind it, right? We fill the mask, and all that color is going to spill outside of it. And you're like, oh no, the piece is ruined. No. Actually, it has just begun. So all you got to do is click between those. And basically, that says, okay, whatever's behind this, this layer right here is acting as the stencil. And all the colors over top of it are going to basically stick to that and not go outside. Of it. So that's the best way I can describe it. So it'll save you a lot of time. And you can either lasso stuff like this, right, like I just showed you, or you can actually just take a brush and always work at full opacity when you're doing this, right? Or pick a brush that doesn't have pressure sensitivity on it because it will kill your wrist, which is why I have a brush just for that. This round brush, right? And see how, no matter how hard I press, it's always filling at 100% opacity. Whereas if I'm using a regular hard brush and I press lighter see I have to like really like press hard to get it to go down right oh and I'm working on the wrong layer that's great <laughs> anyway back to what we were saying so the other cool thing about this is you can go on the layer above that is clipping mask and you can oh the other way if you don't want to alt click these you can also just right click it and then hit create clipping mask that's how you manually do it I guess you could say without using the shortcut. But the cool thing about this is if you want to just like paint stuff in, see how I can just paint all around the lines? And it'll only paint when it's on top of the layer that's behind it, right? The mask that we've created. Same thing with this guy. Let's go over here, right? Say I paint out here, I'm pushing down right now, and then it'll only paint when I get within the boundaries, right? And that's nice. Let's give him a little blue shirt. Cool, huh? And then usually what I like to do to save you even more time is I will color the mask a color that I'm going to use, like later. Like say, um, usually I like to think of the most abundant color. Like ideally, that's the way you work. And because Emma's like whole torso is covered up with this skirt thing, I'll go ahead and color the mask. You know, uh, I'll color it color of a skirt. Oh, and make sure before you fill the mask, make sure you lock the transparent pixels. That's this little baby right here. That's another artist's best friend. 
It allows you to fill the entire picture, and it will only fill where your mask is. Yeah, <laughs> that looks really funny. She has like purple hair. Yes! I like it! I like it. Actually, it should be a little darker. And a little more maroon. Okay, cool. So, basically, that's the way it goes. And the nice thing is, is when you start to create layers over top of this, usually I like to work kind of backwards. Like, I'll create the, the layer on top that I want to kind of just be on top, and usually it's the skin. And then what's really easy is from there, you can even be more sloppy. You can just come in here and be like, la da 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 right, coloring the hair, but because the skin is in front of it, it won't color over the skin, and it will also not color out of the lines. You see how easy you're making this for yourself? And that is going to save you a ton of time, and it allows you to have some more fun with your coloring and, and experimentation. You know, like when I'm shading, like when I go in to add colors and gradients to the comic, I'm just doing this. I'm literally just doing this. Could you imagine how hard this would be if I didn't have those masks there, and I'm like trying to like create gradients and like chop back into it, you know, and like paint over like constantly. If you have a clean silhouette, especially in comics, and painting as well, like when I was working on the splashes for Riot, I'd do the same thing. Like if you set up your masks, this is what I'm trying to drive home, and this will sink into your brain and it will stay there. If you set up your mask correctly, you will save time and it will make your artwork clean, professional, and awesome, and it will save you a ton of headaches. So Let's go ahead and move on to the next portion, right? Because I said I was going to have some special some special techniques for those of you doing comics. Let's go ahead and move over here. Because that technique that I just showed you doesn't work as well when you're doing comics unless you set up your lines a certain way. So, let's say you have your panels here, right? And let's go ahead and open this up. So the important thing to remember when you're working with these, let's go ahead and can these. Let's put those behind. Don't pay attention to anything in these. We're working with these three layers right here. So you have, and actually we can combine these two, right? So you have your lines, right? We have our clean lines with clean edges. There's a little bit of sketchiness on the inside, but that's fine. We have our clean edges. That's the important part. And then we have our frames. It's very important that you get this step right when you're doing comics. I'm going to move this over. I now know I can do this because of the amazing people on the stream. <laughs> so you have your lines and you have your frames. Two separate layers, right? So the problem that you run into, the problem that I've been running into, is let's go ahead and create another layer here. Frame mask. Basically what I will run into is I'll go on to create my frame masks, right? And this is good for the background. Go ahead and lay these babies in. I usually just color them something like, like that. There we go. Color, I'll right, we'll just make them like that. Cool, right? Now let's go ahead and try to do that technique that we were doing before, right? Where we select all the space around the character. And then we're going to invert it. We're going to try to, and watch what happens. See, it doesn't look like a big deal, right? But what's happened is you selected not only your character, but all of the space around it. Now watch. If we try to fill it with a mask, watch what happens. We get terrible results. <gasps> I'm warning you. This may not be pretty to your eyes. Ah, no! We've ruined the entire piece. So... This got me thinking, right? How can I avoid this? How can I get this result right here? How can I get what's happening here and not get what's happening here? Well, I'm about to show you. And this will save you many, many, many headaches. And let's go ahead and put these to multiply, as well as the frames. Cool. So let's go ahead and get rid of that layer. And I'm going to show you guys a little trick that I just came up with after sitting down. I mean, it's really kind of common sense when you think about it, but after you see what I do here, let's go ahead and say this is our mask layer. After you see what I'm about to do here, you'll be like, oh, makes so much sense. 
Okay, so you know how we created our frames on a separate layer? Let's go ahead and take those out, right? And then you're presented with this, right? And the reason you can't just take away the the frames and mass stuff is obvious because it'll like it'll go into your art, right? Like you can't select the form that's not there. So So, let's go ahead and fix this. In Photoshop, there is a tool called the Line Tool. It's down here, right? I think it's also like where all the other shape tools are, right? So you select this baby right here. And then make sure you have this selection, or this thing selected, right? Because if you have this, it like creates a, a shape or something. I don't know exactly how this works. I don't like it. It's like a, it, it makes like a, a vector or something, and I don't like that. So just select this one, because basically it'll just say, okay, create a line there, create a line there, right? And what you're going to do is you're just going to go to the edge of your art, right? Hold shift, or you can just click down the line, and when you hold shift, what it's going to do is automatically make the line straight. If you're going this way, it'll make the line straight. If you're going down, it'll make the line straight that way, or diagonally, right? But since we're going this way, we're just going to do that. And down here, we're going to do the same thing. And make sure it's kind of a, I, I'm doing two pixels, you probably even do one pixel. Right? And all you're doing is just going right across and connecting your art for all the figures in your piece. Like that, right? And then when you put the frames on, you don't even notice that they're there, right? Because you have laid them out correctly. So, step two is take away your frames. And then look, now we have closed off shapes that we can use. So let's go ahead and select everything outside of it. I don't, I forget if that's open or not. I think it's, yeah, it's open. Okay, so select everything outside of it. I'll go ahead and select that too, since there didn't need to be that line there. Select everything outside, shift control I, and then fill it. Oh, oh whoops. Oops, <laughs> working on the wrong layer. There we go, go back to the mask layer. Fill it, and there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. And that is how you do it, and then you lay the frames over top, and now your characters and your frames have been masked properly, and you have the clean shapes you can work with there, and then you go ahead and just start masking out as normal. And that will save you tons of time, because the way that I used to do it was I was presented with this artwork, right? Instead of simply just finishing off the, the shapes and you know removing the frames, what I would do is I would actually go in here and start tracing these lines, right? Oh, this is so annoying, right? Because you, you like miss little spots, you got to go back in there. And I've gotten pretty good over it, or pretty good at it over the last few weeks just because I've been doing this. But I was like, man, there's got to be a better way to do this, you know? Because <laughs> I just got so sick of masking stuff. It really isn't fun. It really pays off. Like I said, it's, it's probably the most... It's the nicest thing to do properly. Like, it's good to take time on it and make sure that your masks are clean, right? But, yeah, it's just not worth doing it this way because it's such a pain in the butt. you got to go back in here and take care of all these little edges that you missed. And sometimes you're not using the right brush, and then you get angry, start yelling at your friend, and nothing really good comes from there. <laughs> so... With that, I'm going to go ahead and finish up episode 62. Thank you guys once again for, I was about to say tuning in. I'm, I'm used to doing the MS stream now. But if you would like to, you can catch me working on my very own comic, Emma, every Monday through Thursday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, the Emma live stream. You can check it out if you go to the Emma webpage. But with that, I'm going to do my outro. Thank you guys once again for tuning in and watching the show on YouTube. Thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if you don't. I'm Keenan Lafferty, and I'll see you guys on Monday.